Hi folks. So this package just came in the mail and it is PC boards from PCB way for our little time domain reflectometer project. And here they are. Really nice boards yet again. The five of them here. Now, I'm going to do up one as I designed. Um, I need to go back to uh, part one of this series to see what I did there. Um, but I may, I may make an alteration. It depends on how well this one works. Um, what I did with that was that I didn't, I didn't have uh, a little resistor here across the output. I've, I've made it so that I'm going to put down resistors of 200 ohms, so all four of them will parallel up to be 500 ohms and um, or 50 ohms I should say. I may need in order to to make the the waveform look a little bit nicer I may need some resistance in there to, to dampen it a little bit but we'll see. I'm just going to build one up and, and, and see. I'm going to get started on this right away so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the surface mount components. I've got uh, these five resistors that need to be put on and then put it into a, a uh, an oven to have it reflow. So I'm going to get on with that right away and then immediately after that I'm just going to mount up the rest of the components and then we can get to testing this and doing some actual experimentation determining the propagation speed of electromagnetic waves in a piece of wire and then using that information then to calculate the length of another piece of the same wire. And that's what I hope to get accomplished today. Okay, that flowed really nicely. That's those are nice fillets of solder. The end of those resistors there. Excellent. Quality boards these. I'm going to go now and, and uh, just assemble all the rest of the components and come back and give it its initial test. All right, here we have it all built up. I'm going to clean up a little bit of the flux, but I, I can do that later. It's not going to affect any of our tests right now. And that's it. I've got it set up. I've got the jumper set up on a short pulse, and we're going to see how long that is. I wasn't quite sure what the the propagation delay in this 74 ACO2 is going to be. We'll check that out. We'll check it out right now. All right, so let me start up the oscilloscope here, and let me get it attached up first. So I'm going to I'm going to attach it with a T. And then I'm going to attach it through uh, a 50 ohm load right directly to the oscilloscope and then onto the end of this I'm going to put this cable here. This cable is exactly 3.51 meters in length. It's going to be significant in a minute. So here let me attach this up to the scope. Okay now I'm going to attach power and now we can see what we have in the scope there. That first pulse is the uh, pulse coming from the time and domain reflectometer. I'm going to call it TDR from now. And this pulse here, the smaller pulse, that one is the one coming back from the end of the cable. So what's happening here? So we're sending out a pulse. We can see what's the length of this pulse. We've got about um, five nanoseconds per division. So the length of the pulse is roughly five nanoseconds. It's coming back out and sometime later we're getting a pulse back. So how sensitive is this? What does that pulse mean? Are there any other things we can see? Well, these are all, these are all good questions that we need to answer. So first of all, let's measure the time between those two pulses. So we'll get some cursors up here. One over here like this to that second pulse. Get the other one and then we'll move it there. Yeah, telling us that we have uh, a total of 36.2 nanoseconds between the pulse. Yeah, now, let's see, it's, how sensitive is that? Let's answer that question first. I got this uh, a little one inch extension here. It's actually just a barrel connector connecting two male connectors together, but we'll put it on. It adds about an inch, about two and a half centimeters to the length of the cable. 
And uh, look at that second pulse, there's a small pulse. That moves. So we can actually, this is how sensitive it is. It, it, these reflectometers are good to within a couple of centimeters, at least, if not better. And why are we seeing a pulse like that? Well, the pulse is coming all the way down from the reflectometer through the cable and is hitting this end point here. This end point here is unterminated. In other words, it's seeing 50 ohms all the way down, all the way along the thing. It finally gets to here and it sees infinity. So what it does, it reflects off here and then all the way back up again. The reason it's a bit lower, it's approximately two thirds the size of the original pulse, is because of losses in the cable. Every cable is going to have some losses in it. This is not particularly fantastic cable. So it, it does have some uh, significant loss in, in within that length. So now let's let's look at this. Put this 50 ohm terminator on here. While that reflection goes away, the reason it goes away is because it's perfectly matched here. It goes into the 50 ohm resistor and it just gets consumed. It would just like it was going into more and more cable. It would just keep going until it reaches something. And that something could be an open circuit. So that's one kind of fault. And this time it gets to go to that to the fault and bounce all the way back and give us our distance to fault. Uh, the other kind of fault that this can detect fairly easily is a short circuit. So I've got this BNC connector right here. You can see I've just shorted it out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to touch this on here and look at this. Now the reflected pulse is going down. So what's happening there? Well, the, the, the pulse is coming down through here. One polarity goes through the short and comes back out the other polarity. That's exactly what's happening. So there's the two kinds of faults that we could detect with a simple reflectometer like this. We could detect a, a short or an open. So if you have, a, let's say, a long cable going out to an antenna somewhere that's buried in the ground or goes through a conduit and you want to find out why you're no longer able to transmit or receive, you can put one of these on there and determine exactly within a centimeter or two where that fault is, whether it's a mouse got in there and chewed through the cable or whether something kicked the cable so that the insulator shorted. Either way, you can detect where the fault is and why your transmitter is not working. You get out there and dig in the right place. Very handy, especially for some people using it, you know, for this for networking and stuff like that. This is all set up. I designed this one here to work specifically with uh, 50 ohms because that's what I use around here. Um, but I could build up one of these things and instead of putting in those 200 ohm resistors that I did put in, I could put in 400 ohm resistors and then come up with a 100 ohm intrinsic impedance and that would be great for doing twisted pairs. So if I had a problem here with my CAT6 cabling in the house, I could find out exactly where it is and I probably will build one of these up so that I can test twisted pair cable with it. We're going to move on and we're going to characterize all of this. So what I mean by characterize it? Well, we're going to determine the velocity factor in this cable, and that's where the, the length, um, the length that we have of that cable is equal to exactly 3.51 meters. Here we're going to determine the velocity factor. So it's a simple form of velocity factor equals two times the length divided by the speed of light times the time it takes to get the reflection back. Now, why two times? Well, because it's got to go all the way down to the fault or the end of the cable, be reflected, and then it's got to travel all the way back up again. So we need to account for that with this two here. So let's do that. So we have, uh, we know that the length here is 3.51 meters. We can see that the time is precisely 36.2 nanoseconds and we know the speed of light is 2.998 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So let's put all that in here so we have our velocity factor equals 2 times our 3.51 and we're going to divide all that by 2.998 times 10 to the 8 and multiplied by our time, 36.2 times 10 to the minus 9 seconds. Well, let's, let's take another step here to simplify it a little bit. So I'm going to get over the calculator. I have less to do. So we can take the next step, VF equals 7.2 divided by 2.998 times 3.62. Because we could just take that minus 9 that becomes minus eight when we take the decimal place there into consideration, and then the minus eight and the plus eight here cancel each other out. So 
this is our velocity factor here. Let's go punch that into the calculator to find out what it is. So that gives us a velocity factor of 0.663. Now what does that mean? Well, that means that electromagnetic waves move at 0.663 times the speed of light through this particular cable. Now the next thing we can do, I want to set up for another problem. We've already determined the velocity factor in this kind of cable. So now we can use that to our distance to fault. Now what I want to do, I actually have a, an application for this. So I have this big box of RG58U cable here. And uh, I've been using this for years and years and years and years. It started off being uh, 300 meters in length. But I've been using this for a long, long time. I've made up many, many, many cables with it. And I don't know how much is left, but I would, I would like to know how much is left. So uh, what I'm going to do is when I, whenever I make up a cable, I'll put some BNC connectors on it. So I'm going to put a BNC connector on here. That way half of my job is done for the next cable I make. And then I'm going to hook it up to the reflectometer and I'm going to find out exactly how long it is now that we have velocity factor for this particular cable. Now, I'm not going to show you me putting the connector on. I did a video on that recently. I'll leave a link up there but it's pretty simple to do and I'll be right back when it's done. Okay, we've got the uh, BNC connector onto the end of this cable in the box and we've got the reflectometers all set up there and, and ready to go. So we'll just attach this and okay, so now we're going to have to, let's, let's uh, increase the amplitude. There we go. Let's move this over so we can get a little bit more there. Uh, first cursor seems to be in the right spot, so we'll now here we go. We'll put it on the peak of the return reflection, which is tiny now, as you can see, because it's got to go through quite a bit more cable, so it's attenuated quite a bit. Okay, so that looks like it's uh, about one point, let's say one point one seven microseconds. So let me write that down. Our T now for this is 1.17 times 10 to the minus 6. All right, now here's our formula of distance to fault is uh, the velocity factor times the speed of light, which that gives us the velocity in the cable, times the time, so that gives us, gives us distance. And of course, we divide that uh, distance by 2. And so if we now just punch in the figures as we did before, D equals. 0.663 times 2.998 times 10 to the 8 times 1.17 times 10 to the minus 6 all divided by 2 so that minus 6 cancels out that leaves 2 so we simplify this down to equals 0.663 times 2.998 times 10 to the 2 times 1.17 all divided by 2 and let's punch that in the calculator and figure out what that is okay so that is d equals 116.3 meters and uh, now i know how much cable i have left in there i'm going to mark that down on the box right now all right, so there we go. Another handy little addition to my little lab around here. Like I said, I'm going to build a 100 ohm version of it and I'll have that available for me in case I ever have a fault. Now, I could have used that a couple of years back when I put a, a large screen TV down in our newly built family room down in the basement here. I did run a cable through uh, cat 6 cable but I didn't have enough and I had to make a splice but I screwed up the splice and I, I really didn't know where it was in the wall you know cutting through drywall is a bit of uh, you don't want you seriously don't want to do too many holes because you have to patch them up again luckily though uh, my son remembered approximately the studs that it was uh, in and we were able to cut it open but if he wasn't that observant we would have had a lot of big holes in it but something like this would have immediately told me exactly where the fault was and I would have made a very nice precision cut, did a proper splice and be back in business. Anyway, that's it. That's the end of our little project. Thank you very much to PCBWay for making this possible and thank you guys for coming to watch. I uh, really appreciate it. 
you know, give me a big thumbs up, uh, subscribe, tell all your friends about me, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye now.